We have turned around from San Pedro. The cameras have been put away for the day. As we work our way out the long trail, we pass through one of the remote rancheros we came across earlier today. Right now. But there were some new ranch trucks occupied with a group of men that did not seem happy to see us. In fact, they looked surprised and agitated. To be frank, we have a legit gut check going on in this situation. Yeah, there are three, three there, and I, out of those seven guys, I think I saw at least three upper aged and the rest middle aged. Oh, oh sorry, I walked on you. Go ahead. I think there was another one at the house. Let's say four vehicles. With a one way in and one way out road, we take every precaution to ensure our safety. Our priority is to keep moving in an efficient and safe manner to gain distance. So we're looking at at least five fighting age men and th two or three not. Second is to stay on high alert and assess how to defend ourselves if it comes to that. We have been caught off guard before and we have learned from those lessons. Go hard on that gut check. Yeah, that was, that was mine. Like, that, that's what I noticed. It was like, okay, sure, it's kind of weird stuff. But it was that everybody else we saw today was pretty smiley, pretty wavy, pretty eager to help. But that group of guys was not. For several hours, long backtrack, eventually passing last night's camp and driving with our headlights off as darkness sets in. All lights go on when we reach the high speed dirt and make our way south out of the area. Eventually, two hours later, we reach a suitable campsite. The Baja Special is presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in association with Patriot Campers, and PCOR systems. And Toyota, the official vehicle provider of X Overland. So last night we came in and we wanted to cross over this mountain range right here to get over to the Sea of Cortez. But we got to about right here, San Pedro, and couldn't go any further. So we retreated out and then took a highway and we found ourselves like over here somewhere. So now this morning, we wanted to be here, but now we're here. So we're gonna go down here, cross over, and then back up to the Bay of Conception, hopefully. Last night we did come across a situation that gave us um, the heebie-jeebies. We, we, got, we got triggered a little bit. So as we were coming out from San Pedro last night, we went through a hacienda, a ranch house, that uh, had a new group of people that were in it that weren't there when we drove up. And we were now returning, and there was three or four able trucks. They had a bunch of stuff out, and about seven younger men that did not look at us with friendly eyes. They were all like, what are they doing here? They almost acted like they had been caught doing something or they really didn't like us being there. Who knows what they were? I'm not saying they were bad guys. I'm not saying they were cartels. I'm not saying they were anything. It's just we got a weird feeling about it. And so whenever, when any of us get a weird feeling, especially Ryan or myself who have like looked for this stuff and been through these things, we act on it. We just trust our gut and go. So we just kept moving and that's how we ended up here. Now the reason I decided to tell you all this is because it doesn't matter where you're traveling in the world. It could be the United States, it could be Canada, it could be wherever. Baja, you will come across things occasionally that make the hair on your neck stand up. And if it does, trust that gut. Don't second guess it. Don't normalize it. Oh, well, it's just this. It's all that. Oh, it's just this. No, don't do that. Act on it. You have that instinct for a reason. 
You may never know why you got it. You may not be able to identify it, but trust it. And that's what we did last night and we got to here. We're safe. We had a little bit of a harder night, but I mean, it added an hour. It probably added two more hours to get to this campsite than we would have planned on, but that's nothing, right? So to this morning, we'll spend a little extra time getting back on track and uh, we're good to go. Back to our regular scheduled programming. Since we had an unplanned departure to the south last night, we are now in search of fuel. We hope to find some in the small town of La Parisma. Which proved to be a bust. We are low on the tanks, but still have 10 gallons in reserve per truck if we need it. We start to drive back again to see the Sea of Cortez in the Bay of Conception. So our uh, fuel stop that we had planned on uh, didn't have a gas station that we could find. It looked like there might have been somebody that was kind of selling gas out of Jerry's, but we also have our own gas in Jerry's, so um, we kind of just decided to push on. Going 21 miles to empty. My dash light will be on any minute. I'm just a tick above E. My gas gauge is from uh, Southern California. Uh, when I almost ran out of gas there because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I think we're pretty good. We have just barely made it without getting into Jerry Cans. Having long range tanks has been handy right. in this part Let's of the world. Town. That was awesome. That was, uh, that was a close one. That was awesome. After refueling, we split the team. Ryan, Tanner, and I are taking the Land Cruiser into a small town nearby, and the other team will find the beach camp that we saw just a few miles back. We came into town to make some phone calls to see if we could potentially uh, go diving tomorrow. Looks like there's some dive sites uh, a little south of us in Loretto, and uh, but it's going to be Sunday, so we don't we don't know if uh, it's going to be really available for us to dive. We don't know if they're open. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is getting camp set up right on the edge of the beautiful Bay of Conception. We've been moving pretty good over the last few days, so having a little time to sit and relax is very welcomed. After all, Baja is a place to let time slip by. No need to be in any real hurry if you can help it. Ready? When are you coming in? How soon? Oh, as soon as I grab stuff. Are those clays, Parker? Yeah. And I got the boots. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's crazy how warm it is now, too, compared to the Pacific Ocean on the other side. Now calm. It's so crazy. After finally getting a call through the dive shop in Loretta, we get an insatiable lust for some real Mexican tacos. Tanner leads the way with his incredible sense of smell, and we soon find a small but wonderfully simple restaurant. Mm. Bet you this is better than what they're having back at camp. Sorry guys, this will be better. The food in Baja is excellent. It's one of the better parts of traveling here for many people, including me. But the beaches are nice too. And even though we just had a great meal, we feel like we are the ones missing out. We just got back from town. They found an awesome spot here, and in town I got a fishing rod. I've never cast it into salt water before. I've always fished growing up, fresh water, lakes, mountain, rivers, all that. So, very excited to see if I can go out there and catch something in the ocean. Never done it before.
spearfishing has always been at the top of the list for this trip. And Ryan continues to come up short on edible fish. The fish off, so I'm trying to eat it, but I know that when I caught it, it's still kind of breathing. Yeah. Take selfies, it's really good. He's good at taking selfies. Probably the best. Better selfie taker than a fisherman. <laughs> Taking refuge from the intense sun under the Pecor awning, Ryan, now having ice, takes another stab at margaritas. Oh, expensive, but better than Jose. Did you shake it with ice? Ah, uh, you can. I want my yeah. shaking not stirred. Shake it with ice. You could shake it with the ice. It would be fine. Thank you, muchos gracias. While better than the last one, there's still room for improvement. We often travel pretty hard on our trips. We like it that way. But every now and then, it's really nice to take a minute and soak it all in. In fact, Dan slept for three hours, has gotten up to eat dinner, and goes right back to bed. I just laughed. In fact, all of us crashed hard after this, which was good. Tomorrow will be an early start. Tanner finishes out the night with a catch and release of his first saltwater fish. I don't know what it is. Do another one. So this morning we've had an early start so that we can get down to Laredo on time for our training and getting ready to go scuba diving. But it's really nice because we've had we've been able to enjoy this beautiful sunrise, but now we gotta hit the road to Laredo. Today is a big day for all of us. Not only because we are diving again, but this time we will be diving as a complete team for the first time. The Moreto Bay National Park is one of the biggest marine reserves in Mexico and the largest in Baja. It is full just over the bow of the boat here. There is some horses. Let's take a deeper look. Bucket list item, swim with a dolphin someday. Maybe today will be my day. There's dramatic cliffs, lava formations, Beaches straight out of a Paradise magazine and hidden coves. It's all ideal for diving. The new diving crew's experience expands as they roll back off the side of the boat. Below, sea lions are plunging from the rocks to join us in our dive. These seals struggle to move on the surface, but in the water, they are agile and curious. This is a stone scorpion fish, a solitary fish, that has a sting that causes intense pain and swelling. But he's not the only menace marching around in these waters. There's also sharks and stuff as well. That's insane. Do you see all the seals swimming 
Back in the boat, I have a twist, waiting for the Van Stralens. So you guys have had 12 days of being with the expedition. On the way home, the three of you are 100% in charge. From this boat to at least the Mexico-US border. Navigation, campsites, food, Fuel, all of it, made between the three of you, and we <laughs> will help you if needed. When trying to train up a crew, there is no better way to accelerate skill sets than to let them take the helm and work through the issues as they come up. It's official, the handoff is happening right now. We're going to take a step back and we're just going to watch and observe and uh, see how their, how their dynamics go. Could be a couple rough days ahead. I mean, sorting things out, getting underway, but I think, I think they'll pick it up really fast. Um, yeah, so here we go. This could get interesting. So we are gonna go find the nearest and biggest supermarket right now. And then we're gonna split up so that we can get as many things done as possible while we can. So Daniel and Ryan will work on maps while we're in the store and then at least two or three people probably will go into the store and get all the things we need. And then we'll hopefully be done and out of Loretto by four, maximum 4.20. So, yeah. Hello. How'd it go in there? It was good. They had, it's funny, the things that are so easy to find, like we couldn't find hummus. And lunch meat they only sell in like these really small packages and we use those a lot for snacks on the road because we're bad about stopping the lunch. They did have sliced cheese but this is what you get for lunch meat and I had to use Google Google Translate because I didn't know if it was bologna, chicken, turkey, ham. I think this is a uh, turkey or ham. I don't know. Mystery meat extravaganza. Mystery meat. Yeah it's all good water so Ryan can continue making ice so that he can continue to make his margaritas so that's a selfish request. I think we're good. So now we gotta figure out where to put it all. Peter and Dan are in the Tacoma getting things sorted out. I think they're making some pretty good calls. Peter and Dan ready themselves to take the convoy lead in the Tacoma. Maybe he didn't see it, huh? I just don't it's, feel heat. I could be in a sweater outside and it's be too fine. too funny. Like, and I love hearing it. Everyone's just saying, if you have heated seats on, it's the middle, like I'm burning just sitting in here. I'm not even warm blooded. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. I just don't notice. Loretto is the furthest point south we will reach on this trip. Tonight's big push will get us back into Baja Norte, some six hours north, where we plan to hit up a good shell in the famous Rice and Beans Hotel back in San Ignacio. Is that all we need in footage, or uh, do you want to talk about something else? I'd like to talk about whatever you'd like to talk about, Dan. Dan, what do you like? Let me tell you the history and everything new with our family. We're just gonna turn on Taylor Swift again. Don't mind us. So are we. So are we. Tomorrow will be the Van Stralen's first real challenge as they lead the trip. Un corazón destruido. We are arriving late to San Ignacio in the Rice and Beans Hotel. We parked, we've set up camp quickly, and we've all gone to sleep listening to the peaceful night sounds. Besides some cats having their turf war.
called this meeting to discuss to get on the same page of what what mistakes are we going to allow and what mistakes are we going to let can't let slide obviously anything safety wise we gotta yeah. say hey no but like <clears throat> if they don't catch the water today totally run on it yeah we don't fill the water because we got the peak core run we got peak core running again we got an extra extra but like and there's enough around it in an emergency yeah, yeah. we could always so. stop at a tienda and get yeah. more water but i want them to go through that mistake yeah um navigation mistakes i'm yeah. totally fine with being blown off course for a night okay if it happens just one yeah. you know i'll bet it only happened just once I'm totally okay with being way late today. If it, you know, mm -hmm. for time management practice. Yeah. Okay. And then what else? We'll see how this goes. It takes one second for the first problem for the Van Stralens to work through a rise. Not a. The water pump on the Tundra's P core <laughs> is not working. Something in the, the wiring. Ah. What should we do? I don't know what we should do. Send it over to the fleet manager. Who should we? Let's move that up the chain to the fleet yeah. manager. Fleet manager? Uh -huh. What should call? we do? Well, I'm not familiar with PCOR, but can you? is there anyone you can call that would know that? Is that an easy solution, or is that just going to get really technical really fast? It's a simple wiring solution. Like, the, the pump and the switch and the stuff is as simple as it gets, yeah. so we could diagnose it. Like, if we have dialectic grease, we, that would be a good thing to probably put in there. Do we? Those. I don't think we do. Well, I'll, I'll look. Yeah, let's look. Okay, we're getting some of the solution, okay. potential solution. Can we afford the time? Navigator! Navigator! Can we afford the time to diagnose this now, or should we wait? It depends on what time we need to get this in. Six o'clock, six thirty. Told you twice. Yeah. Well then. Well, personally, I just think that we have other places to fill our water on two different rigs, and if it's not an immediate problem, then I think we should probably get moving to get some of the footage we need. I would just say, Cut. contrary to that, is we don't know what we're going to see up the road. So if we can do it now and it won't take too long to put dialectic grease on something. Uh, or... Mechanics, how long would that take to pull that apart? We just had it apart this morning. 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. If that, yeah. Okay. I feel like it's worth that. It's worth that time to have our water up and running. And we could order, maybe we could just order breakfast as well, like start with that, half of the people. If it's only, I mean, we can't all stand around and watch two guys work on that, or one guy. So if, if you want, we can go in there, see what we have, bring it back, get your order, order, and it'll be done in 15 minutes anyway. Yeah, if you would like. That's smart, divide and conquer. Hmm. Hmm. I concur, doctor. <laughs> Breakfast is always a good answer, especially when you're at the famous Rice and Beans Hotel. Good morning, guys. The famous restaurant and bar that has served thousands of travelers and racers uh, as they have made their way through here, including some of our own friends and crew members, Richard and Ashley Giordano of Destiny. Yes. of beans and rice are full of epic people, legends like this man who made over 20 trips down to Baja by himself on his motorcycle from 1950 to 1965. You know, when there weren't any paved roads or anything, or maps or GPSs. 
bacon, ham, chorizo, machaca, The food here is some of the very best we have had, and their margaritas are second to none, renewing Ryan's drive to perfect his craft. The last thing I want is for them to feel duped or, or that we set them up to fail. So. Does anybody know where that glass cleaner went? So I kept trying to give them hints like. It's actually in the drawer. Hey, do you know, are all the trucks ready to go? Did you check everything? Do you know everything you should be checking on the trucks? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're good. And I was like, all right, sounds good. Leaving here, three mistakes are made. One, a refuel did not occur. Two, water was not filled from the spigots at the hotel. And third, and didn't actually fix the Pecor pump. I think we could make it. There's also on the paper map showing a gas station in Punta Final, but that's not showing up on the Garmin, so there is a chance we could. Command. No, there is a chance we. <laughs> <laughs> there is a chance we could fill up in Punta Final tonight. I whispered over to Ryan, I was like, what, what, do, what do you think? And he's like, it's got to be tight. It's going to be close. So I'm reading uh, Ryan's body language. We might run out of gas. But who needs gas when you're headed deep into the tracks of the Baja 1000? Just pulled on the track for our Baja 1000. Big fan of the race and the event and off-road racing in general. And. I'm really excited. Never got to be on the racetrack at all before, and so this is gonna be a really cool experience. Kurt sent us this route, and so Baja 1000 has always been a far off bucket list item of mine someday, and I've always been really curious about just what it looks like, how it works, and this is really exciting. I'm stoked to get to drive on some of that. A couple miles along the route, we encounter a herd of rams making their way to their night's protection on the ridge. These rams are another example of hunters in Mexico working together on conservation efforts to keep these wild herds strong. With night falling, camp is the next priority, and Dan leads us into a great spot. Though the days are sometimes long, it's hard not to have high morale when you're in remote places with great people and good food. So we got a nice little fire going, um, mainly to keep the sand flies away, but we got some nice uh, dry wood we collected, so it just lit up really easy and nice. Nice to have a good campfire. It's been a while. All right. Dinner will be served. It's going to be a good night of barbecue. Kind of a nice break after all the tacos we've been having. Uh, I'm really excited to put all this together and go sit by the campfire and have a good meal. I can watch that one, guys. Right? <laughs> animation. <laughs> of animation. Good morning. The water's ridiculously low, but we're finding out that there is a ton, a ton of water in the reserve on that thing. Well, at least it feels that way. So we're trying to force it, like, here, fill up my water bottles. Here, do this, do that. You know, trying to get the force the problem to reveal itself, but it's just not revealing itself. <laughs> We're out of water. Fleet manager Peter, when doing his morning checks, catches the issue. The trailer is showing up as like the bottom red line, super slim. So that's what, an 18 gallon tank? Yeah. yeah so it's probably like maybe a, maybe a gallon or a few liters. But that's okay. We can use the water in the PCOR.
Did we get the pump fixed in here? Not yet. Oh. It's our, this is our one water source now. Mm. That one's empty. Is it? It's like pretty much empty. There's probably a couple bottles left, but it's on the red line. This one's half, so we got at least eight gallons in here. So we could always do what we did last time if we find any good, clear water. Just yeah, for it. sure, for sure. Who's on the water systems? Right. Monitoring water systems. So, this would fall to you. It's not a blame game. It's just like, okay, this is my resource. Now it's my, it was my problem I missed, now it's my problem to fix. So, as you're looking through these types of problems, what I think makes a good expedition member and leader, because we're trying to build you into leaders, uh, is a lot of forethought. You know, you're looking way down the road on stuff. So you're making sure that you have everything you need. So if compounding problems start to happen, you'll have the resources to overcome it. We want to fix whatever that is to keep pushing that reserve water as far as it can. Otherwise, what should we probably have to do if we're in the desert for four days with no water? Turn back and get water. Turn back. Peter decides that the water fix is mission critical. Okay, yep. So we fix the water pump with a repaired ground wire. There we go. And kind of like right in here. All right, we'll go see how much water we got. Yep. Yeah, it's half. Half should be about eight, right? The little that was in there, I'd imagine. This one in here, right? Yep. Like so we essentially have one full tank of water. Mm -hmm. Now the navigator is on high alert for any water source we can pull from in the near future. Today we're going to be continuing along the Baja 1000 racetrack. We've heard that there's some few, uh, a few technical spots up ahead, so it'll be fun to keep on exploring and see what we'll run into. We're not really sure where we're going to end up today. We're just going to see uh, how far we can make it and then make our plans from there. The temps are climbing, and it feels good to be in the air-conditioned trucks. We are nearing the summer season, and it can reach temps in the 100s for days on end. An hour up the trail, we are now in four low as we pick our way through a little crawl section. Yeah, we got Dan and Lee truck, Peter and Tundra towing the Patriot Camper. This is their first off-road section that they've driven these trucks in. And uh, got the other guys out filming. Should be good. Yep. The plan is to have Ryan spot the newest drivers, Dan and Peter, through the rock field. Shelly and I will follow. Tanner and Caroline hit the cameras in the intense heat. I'll handle the aerial footage as we pick our way through. Looking good, looking good. Yep, straight now, right there. There we go, we're about to be around that big rock, I think. There you go. Good job, man. Looking good, looking good. Peter puts the Tundra and the CBI skids to work. Navigating a long wheelbase vehicle and trailer through the obstacles takes skill. Both Peter and Dan show promise as drivers, and more time behind the wheel is what they require. Ryan stacks some strategic rocks for the Tundra's rear axle to lift up, allowing the frame to clear.
The Van Stralen crew is well on their way, getting stretched and building confidence every minute. But the unexpected is about to show up, and this next situation will show their mettle. So join us next time on the Baja Series finale.